absolutely candid, you know. And uh, during my playing days, you know, there was there were not many occasions where I express uh, openly, mm. you know, my thought process, what went through mm. uh, in my career, what went through I in me as a person. Mm. Uh, it was always within the uh, closed walls of the Indian dressing room, you know, and with my colleagues, but never in the open. Mm. Whereas here, it's a journey which I share and which I pen down. And the only reason for that is, uh, like, I, I give a lot of motivational talks. Mm -hmm. So two years back, while giving a motivational talk in Goa for one of the MNCs, one elderly person came forward and told me that uh, uh, whatever I spoke in that 45 minutes uh, talk really inspired him. And he told that whatever you spoke not only inspired me, but it will be very uh, valuable for my son, for my grandson. Mm -hmm. So why don't you uh, write a book you mm -hmm. know, and share your journey? Uh, because in 45 minutes, if I can have the impact, then I'm sure that if you pen it down, then a lot of people can get uh, or learn from your journey. And that's, that, that was a trigger because right from my playing days, uh, my uncle always wanted me to share my journey uh, with the world. Mm -hmm. because it, it didn't do that. I didn't do that uh, because I was thinking that immediately after my retirement, I will do that. But I just got busy with a lot of other commitments. Community. So that's yeah. So that's why I'm very pleased that Kaushik, uh, mm -hmm. who's a good friend of mine, I'm sure you also yeah, know Kaushik. Yeah. So he's been very accommodative and very flexible and he uh, accepted my request, you know, and it, it was quite a uh, lovely journey, you know, memorable journey, sharing my uh, stories, especially uh, right from my childhood, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, a journey of a cricketer, mm -hmm. everyone knows about it after he becomes a star, after he playing, after he starts playing for the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are a lot of uh, players in this country uh, or around the world who never get an opportunity to play for the national team. Right. Yeah, so here it, this journey, especially the background I come from, a background of doctors, a family of doctors, and to take a tough decision, which we all Indians have to take at the age of 17, once we finish our 12th class, which career option to choose, the dilemma I had, uh, and uh, whether to become a doctor or uh, become a cricketer. Luckily, with the, with the influence of my uncle, my parents gave uh, me the freedom to pursue my dream, but they also gave a deadline of five years. Yeah. Within those five years, if I don't become an Indian cricketer, mm. then I should I would stop. I should stop playing the game of cricket again. Come back, mm. appear for the entrance exam, and become a doctor. Mm -hmm. So you know the journey right from my younger days to as a first class cricketer mm. to you know my international as an international cricketer for 16 years. What goes through uh, the life of a cricketer? How it impacts. Uh, his thought process mm -hmm. and also what are the influences he, you mm -hmm. know, because it's very important to keep it within yourself. But here it's more about, like I, I, I enjoy reading a lot of autobiographies of okay. eminent uh, successful people, not necessarily from cricket, but any walk of life. And, and what I realize is in my life so far, I learned a lot reading from those books okay. because every successful person mm -hmm. goes through ice and downs. There's not one person who had a smooth ride, mm -hmm. a smooth journey. Right. But how we dealt with those eyes, how we dealt with that lows, mm -hmm. how, what was his thought process to bounce back? Mm -hmm. Because we always think about the failures, mm -hmm. but how tough it is to, you know, maintain success or carry yourself in a dig dignified manner when you're successful, especially in India when you're treated like a demigod as a cricketer. Right. So I think I learned a lot uh, reading the autobiographies, a lot of eminent personalities. And I felt that you know, if anyone can learn from my journey, uh, I, I will be really happy. You know? So this is something for a youngster who, want, who has a dream and how he can aspire, how he can work hard, how, how he can be committed to his dream, then he can achieve the dream. Okay. It's for the parents, what, how to tap the talent in your kids mm -hmm. and how to encourage your kids uh, to become successful. Right. And, uh, then it's for the coaches, how to manage uh, the various teams, how to manage the superstars, how to manage uh, the, the, you know, the team environment. It's, 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 it's a role of a family how to look after, how to make sacrifices. Like I wrote an entire chapter about my wife mm. who made so much of sacrifices so that I can concentrate on my passion, which is to play for the country. Right. You know, so I think uh, I'm very happy with the way it's come out. Uh, see, I've always enjoyed uh, playing against them. It's not only international cricket, even when I was playing under 19, uh, for India under 19 against the Australian youth team uh, in 1994 I was the top run getter in that series in fact I got 
a lot of recognition uh, the way I batted in that series. I've always enjoyed uh, playing against them. The reason may be because of their attacking competitive nature. Mm -hmm. Because as, as a bowling unit, probably they were the best bowling unit in, uh, in the generation we played the game. Uh, and they had bowlers, uh, good quality, fast bowlers, spin bowlers who can do well anywhere in the world. Uh, but they always used to look to take your wicket. Mm -hmm. And I was someone you know, who was a touch player who always looked to time the ball and always try to pierce the f uh, mm -hmm. gaps mm -hmm. in the field. So because of that attacking uh, nature of this, I also got a lot of opportunity to score runs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, But their competitive uh, nature got the best out of me, not only uh, out of me but also from the entire Indian team. Mm -hmm. Because whenever you've seen since 2003, uh, it's the Indian team which challenged the Australian team, the mighty Australian team. First under Steve Waugh and then against Rookie Ponting. Mm -hmm. And I think whenever we played against them, we raised our bar, we raised our level of playing the game right. you know, and we be became a better uh, team. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, just their competitiveness and the never say die attitude of the Australians got the best out of me and mm -hmm. the team. So I was someone uh, who was never uh, showing my emotions, oh. you know, and I, I always, uh, you know, feel that competitiveness or having the killer instinct or having aggression doesn't mean that you start uh, showing your emotions mm -hmm. or you're throwing tantrums. It's, it's all about showing that mental strength and toughness mm -hmm. when it matters the most, you know, and as a batsman, what matters the most is in tough challenging conditions or in situations which are very challenging and tough and against good quality opposition can you go out and perform at your best and do uh, your best for your team get runs get tough runs mm -hmm. and, and I, I'm very proud that I was able to do that you know so I think uh, uh, when when you play uh, over a period of uh, 16 years you know if you're not tough mentally you wouldn't do that uh, and people will be surprised because yes whenever people talk about the word sledging uh, people relate that to the Australians, mm -hmm. you know, but the Australians didn't sledge me much at all. Uh, and uh, I think uh, smart sledging is all about knowing whom to sledge and uh, how to sledge, you mm -hmm. know, because f for some people sledging can be a distraction, for mm -hmm. some people sledging can be a motivation, uh, so for some people sledging will not affect them at all. Mm -hmm. So I was in the third category because irrespective of whoever sledge, it never ever affected or perturbed me. Mm -hmm. So I think. Uh, I always uh, felt that uh, when you're playing for your country and you're playing at the highest level, you have to be mentally tough. Mm -hmm. If you're not strong, however talented or skillful you are, you'll not be able to survive. Mm -hmm. So, let me, this is there's an irony here. You scored so many runs against yeah. Australians yeah. and they didn't sledge you. Why? Yeah. I, I'm not sure. I think, uh, again, uh, uh, it, probably they knew that it was not going to affect me okay. or it, it's not going to distract me. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, it never ever happened. You know, one odd. Here or there incident, mm -hmm. but not at all. And uh, in those incidents, you didn't uh, reciprocate. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not much. So, yeah. So uh, again, you know, I, I I feel that smart sledge. In fact, you know, I always tell that you know Zahir and uh, Arbujan uh, are, are the smartest sledges I have seen. <laughs> yeah, I have seen. You know, and and uh, it's it's great. You know, when you get under the skin of the batsman, it's all about distracting the batsman, distracting their thought process so that they can uh, make a wrong decision, mm -hmm. play a false shot. Uh, and I think uh, Zahir and uh, Baji were the smartest ledgers I've seen. And what was their USP? You know, it, it's again knowing what to tell, okay. when to tell is also very important That's because right. if you should not overdo it. Uh, because if you overdo it, then the effect it has is lost. So I think they exactly knew when to do it and the impact it had was unbelievable. Yeah, so in, in the book, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So everything, right, right from the time we finished the Mumbai Test match mm. till the time we finished the uh, Calcutta Test match. And there was a three-day match in between. In yeah, I didn't play that. Yeah, I, yeah, I was not part Ivani of that. Yeah, 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 yeah Saro was uh, also uh, who played that game. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, I, I write about after the Mumbai game, uh, how I went and watched uh, some movies. Then I went to Shirdi mm. uh, to take the blessings and darshan of uh, Shirdi Sai Baba. From there, I went back to Hyderabad, how I prepared. 
and I, I, I read about how I land in Calcutta and after the first practice session mm -hmm. I suddenly had back spasm mm -hmm. I was uh, almost I went into the room of a physio mm -hmm. Andrew Leapers you know and I, I, I was literally in tears because when I saw Andrew asked me to see myself uh, in the mirror mm -hmm. I had a list where my back was tilted towards one side mm -hmm. and my lower half was straight mm -hmm. you know and I, I was hoping that I will be fit in two days time but Andrew told with this can you be fit and playing against the mighty Australians mm. uh, but thanks to Andrew you know and his hard work that I was able to uh, play the game play the game you know and uh, what transpired during that game what was the uh, you know how me and Rahul talked to each other how Rahul motivated me and vice versa and then how what was the impact of the bowlers on the last day mm -hmm. you know and the kind of celebration and so everything you know is, is written there and see uh, it, it was it was a monumental test match you know, and uh, the reason it was a monumental test match was because of of the situation we were in you know 274 runs behind following on against the mighty Australians who beat us in three days time in uh, uh, Mumbai and from there to come and emerge as winners in that test match following up with a uh, nail-biting win in uh, Chennai and winning the series uh, was was a very memorable test match you know but what was the formula I followed or Rahul followed when we were in doldrums you know and that's something which again you know when I give the motivational talks I talk about that you know when you're pushed to the wall uh, when you're in tough situation challenging situation how do you think you know so it's not only your skill your talent which helps you in those kind of situation but it's what you think will help you know because not only in cricket or sport but in life we have a lot of challenging situations which we have to face which we have to overcome so I, I felt that you know that that was a great learning uh, from that test match not only to me but the entire team mm -hmm. and we were in similar situation post that also like I straight away remember Adelaide test match mm -hmm. uh, in 2003-04 where Rahul got a double hundred I got a hundred we were in a similar challenging situation Mohali is one yeah. more Very so the, yeah so along my journey you know there were a lot of tough challenging uh, situation where I went out or team went out and won the game mm -hmm. but I think that for me and the team was a great learning experience It's still the last wicket is taken or the last run is scored never ever give up mm. just keep fighting just keep fighting you never know when the tide will turn when it will turn towards your 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 way you know so till then you have to keep on fighting keep on working out never to give up Viru uh, sings a lot in yeah, 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 uh, yeah. during his innings, yes. especially when he's going with well. yeah, yeah. Uh, you Did you and Rahul sing something? No, no, no. How didn't. did you motivate? So, it it just, you know, I mean, me and Rahul, whenever we used to bat together, and not only for India, even when we're playing uh, first class cricket, whenever, even when we're playing uh, junior grade cricket, we never used to talk too much uh, right. when we were batting, mm. you know, and, and there was, there was a uh, you know, it's just about we knew each other's game. Mm -hmm. It's just about at the end of the over, remind ourselves of what the team requires, mm -hmm. and never impose ourselves on the other's game. So I think we didn't talk too much. All we told is, okay, one more over, that's it. Finish the over again, come back one more over. over, by over. Yeah, over by over, and so that that's another thing which uh, uh, was something which we learned uh, that day is you have to have goals, mm -hmm. even in challenging situation, mm -hmm. you have to find a solution. And you know, break that goals into smaller goals. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think always about the bigger goal, mm -hmm. then you will struggle because it's going to be, uh, you know, qu minute. yeah, quite a, quite a distance away. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you break the bigger goal into smaller goals, mm -hmm. then it's easy for you to achieve the smaller goals. So me and Rahul during that entire fourth day, all we were doing was reminding ourselves of the smaller goals. Mm -hmm. And the smaller goal for us was play each over and play each ball on its merit. Oh yeah, without without a doubt, you know I think India start as favourites, you know, and this uh, I, I I tell the reason is India is a settled side. Mm. Now I believe that if India plays to its potential, mm. then it can definitely win this series convincingly. Mm -hmm. But for that, I think it's very important that the batsmen pile up a big score in the first innings, mm -hmm. uh, because in Australia or any overseas condition, if you score 
uh, heavily in the first innings and you post a big total in the first innings, then you India has got a firepower to take 20 wickets in the bowling department. They've got firepower where they can easily take 20 wickets. But if, if you don't post a par score and you post a below par score, then you're always chasing the game. You always have to be having defensive fields and uh, the approach has to be defensive. So I just hope that the Indian batsmen play to their potential and pile a big first innings total and once that happens I think eventually India will win the test match and to start the test match on a winning note is also very crucial right. yeah so the first test uh, has a lot of importance mm -hmm. uh, and I just hope that you know the the mistakes which India did in South Africa or in uh, England they should not repeat you know because when you're playing against a quality side when you're playing against a home team in their own conditions uh, which, which uh, it's very important that you have to win the crucial moments mm -hmm. in a test match mm -hmm. because there will be three or four crucial moments, mm -hmm. and whichever win team wins that crucial moments eventually wins the test match. Mm -hmm. So, India, while they were in position of strength in England or also in South Africa, they were not able to win those crucial moments, and that's why eventually the result went to the uh, the home team. So it's about winning those crucial moments and if they do that, then uh, they will uh, win this uh, tour uh, convincingly. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, from Pitch's point of view, I think the, uh, because I, I've realized that in my uh, playing days as well. You know, the first tour is always a challenging tour. The second tour onwards, you know what to expect and as professional cricketers, you prepare yourself uh, to do well on those uh, wickets. Mm -hmm. you know, so, I, I feel that this Indian batsman with the experience they had mm -hmm. in 2014 uh, will, will do well even on the Australian wickets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, it cannot be only on Kohli. You know, because this in, uh, Indian team has got experience and this class in the batting lineup. You know, it, it, but it's about everyone going out, and having a game plan, and sticking to game plan. The reason why Virat was so successful in England mm -hmm. is he didn't repeat the mistakes of 2014. Mm -hmm. You know, and especially the area where he was susceptible, which was his weakness, has now become his strong point. Mm -hmm. And also the kind of discipline he showed in leaving the balls outside the off stump mm -hmm. uh, was was really really critical. Uh, for him to uh, get those runs, you know, mm -hmm. getting close to 600 runs in five tests may phenomenal. So I think every batsman uh, has to take the responsibility, and they've got class. You know, you got right from KL Rahul, Murli Vijay, top of the order. Now with Prithvi Shaw not playing, mm -hmm. even young Prithvi is a very talented player. Mm -hmm. uh, then you got experience in Pujara at three, mm -hmm. Ajinkya at five, you know, Rohit at six. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think there's so much of experience and talent in that batting lineup. So you cannot say that you have to only depend on Virat. Other batsmen should also co contribute and I'm sure they will contribute. Yeah, the bowling attack is a complete bowling attack. You know, whether in the fast bowling department or in the spin bowling department, there is variety, there is variety and there is uh, uh, firepower. Because when you see the fast bowling department, you've got five bowlers who are, who are different. Uh, and and all can bowl quick, you know, and very skillful. And in spin bowling department, you have uh, Ashwin, you have Kuldeep, and you've got Jadeja. Again, there is variety and there is uh, quality. Something Not at all. In fact, I was so happy about it because, again, I, I share because there is one entire chapter about. Uh, the f the four batsmen I, I played a lot of uh, cricket with, you know, Viru, uh, Rahul, Sachin, and Saurav. And in that also, I mean, Viru is such a confident uh, person. Not only cricketer, as a person, is very, very, very confident, very positive, uh, and very unique. You know, I think his strength is his, is his mind. His strength is his uh, approach towards life. Uh, and I still remember. This was uh, after the test series, we were playing the one day series against Australia. Mm -hmm. So I got 281 and uh, that was a memorable test series and we finished the match in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, uh, Viru fractured his finger. Yes. But he didn't know because he took an x-ray uh, and but he didn't know that he fractured. We went to Pune and I still remember that we were having a dinner mm -hmm. in, the, in the Pune hotel after checking in. And uh, Viru suddenly told Lakshman Bhai, uh, up, you, you missed mm -hmm. scoring the first triple hundred. Mm -hmm. Uh, for India and this is something which I am going to do. 
and he didn't even play test match cricket till then. Uh -huh. And and I was literally surprised, you know. And I I thought, okay, I mean, as a senior, I was just telling, you know, okay, all the best. I'm I'm sure you will do it. He didn't even get into the test team till then, you know. And and then once he got into test team, we all know, you know, the kind of start he had to his test career. And then once he got to his triple hundred in uh, Multan, I was not surprised uh, because while Viru, everyone thinks that Viru doesn't. Uh, think about his game, mm. Viru knows exactly how to score runs, he, the game plan he had, mm. he had full trust mm. uh, and belief in that game plan. Mm. And, and the logic behind that bold statement was because he knew that uh, he was the one who could score runs quickly. Mm -hmm. And for someone to get a triple hundred, mm -hmm. you have to score runs quickly. Mm -hmm. you know, but otherwise, if you're taking too many deliveries to score runs, then the team eventually will declare the innings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and very few times it will be where the situation would be like in Kolkata where we are 274 runs behind yeah. and you get an opportunity. So, uh, that, that's, 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 the, that's the reason why Viru had that confidence mm -hmm. and he, I was so happy mm -hmm. uh, when he got the triple hundred and Viru came back and he just told, uh, told me and reminded me mm -hmm. that uh, I told you before that I'll be the first one to get uh, triple hundred and I'm so pleased for him. Yeah, after the Australia series, after getting my first uh, ODI 100 mm -hmm. and especially the batting position I was batting because I made my debut in 1998. From 1998 to 2000, I didn't play too many games but whenever I played, it used to be at number 5, number mm -hmm. 6. Uh, yes, I got an opportunity in Australia after I scored 167 as mm -hmm. an opener mm -hmm. but I didn't uh, use that opportunity. But I felt that I understood uh, the formula of getting runs mm -hmm. in ODIs. Mm -hmm. Uh, after during that Australia series or prior to the Australia series, mm -hmm. I felt that after the domestic season of 1400 runs, I was a much more mature uh, cricketer. So, uh, so I, I felt my position was in the top three or maximum four, you know, and I got an opportunity there. And uh, from 2001 onwards, whatever limited opportunities I got, I, I was quite uh, successful and I was happy with the way uh, I performed for the team. USA, <laughs> you know, I almost uh, uh, left the game. You know, I mean, my, even my parents, my coaches, my uncle never uh, didn't know about that because I was so hurt and disappointed. I thought, you know, because I I, I felt that I was deserving mm -hmm. because prior to the World Cup, yes, we, we played a couple of games in New Zealand where it was tough wickets to bat on. Mm -hmm. The entire team struggled there. But prior to that, against the West Indies, I was the highest run getter for mm -hmm. India in that series. So uh, again. You know, how important passion is, is something which I learned. You know, while I, while I was hurt, while I was disappointed and hungry, and I went off to uh, US to spend time with my childhood friends who, who didn't understand the game too much. You know, it was just a way of going away from the game. But after uh, some time, I started missing something. Mm. I started missing hitting the cricket ball. And then I realized that I'm not playing the game of cricket, mm -hmm. you know, to only play a World Cup, to play a particular format. I'm playing to, you know, go out and score runs for my country. Yes. And that's something which my uh, father told at the age of 17. And then when I uh, played my first test match uh, in 1996, mm. he told that, you know, uh, he and my mother are serving the country using a stethoscope mm -hmm. and he told you go out and serve the country using a cricket bat right. and, I, and I was so passionate and that was my love mm -hmm. so that's something again I realized in 2003 that it doesn't matter what format you're playing or which team you're playing for it's important for you to go out and enjoy and you know and pursue your passion and once that happens once you have that commitment once you have that attitude mm -hmm. eventually you'll have a longevity because to achieve excellence which I always strive to do to achieve excellence you have to play over a longer period of time you cannot achieve excellence in one or two years so I'm happy that because of that passion and the love for the game I was able to play for 16 years mm -hmm.